Ms. Kwan. The commercial rent assistance program is supposed to provide the much needed support to small businesses so that they can survive the pandemic. By only allowing landlords with a mortgage to apply for it, the Liberals show that they are less concerned about supporting small businesses than ensuring big banks get their mortgage payments. Surely the Liberals know that Bay Street is not the target here. Will the minister eliminate the mortgage requirement and allow small businesses to apply instead of the landlord? The Honourable Minister. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. We uh, do see that this uh, this emergency rent uh, approach will be very helpful for small businesses and for landlords. Uh, we have uh, come out and said that we will be providing more information to allow uh, those uh, landlords without mortgages to be part of this program. We are, are looking forward to providing more details so this can work for Canadian small businesses. Ms. Kwan. At the moment, the reality is that not one small business in the Chinatown Parquet in my riding is eligible for the commercial rent subsidy, and they're not alone. Representatives from the Hastings BIA tell me that small business there are also struggling. Even the landlords are saying that they should not be the ones applying for the rent subsidy, and they all want the mortgage requirement eliminated. It is absurd that the Prime Minister will bail out big companies who use tax havens, but he won't help out these small mom and pop shops. When will the minister realize that small businesses are the economic engines in all of our communities and fix the program so small businesses can get the help they need? The Honourable Minister. Mr. Speaker, I'd just like to thank the member for her question. We are very much trying to work to ensure that small businesses are in a strong position. The emergency business account, which we announced this morning, will be expanded to encompass a greater availability for more businesses and is important. There'll be more information on the emergency rent approach, which of course, we're trying to work together with the provinces since it is a jurisdiction that's the provincial jurisdiction. But as with all of our programs, we will endeavor to make sure that they are improved as we go along are recognizing the challenges that this uh, emergency is presenting us. Ms. Kwan. Time is of the essence, Minister, and repeating the same message box weeks after week will not change a thing. But stopping bailouts to big corporations using tax havens will. In addition to small businesses, municipalities and public entities are also struggling. TransLink had to cut services and laid off 1,500 workers. The PE, after 110 years, will not survive the pandemic if they can't get some help. That would mean a permanent loss of 125 full-time and 106, sorry, 1,600 part-time workers, not to mention a loss of an additional 2,500 summer jobs for young students. Will the minister do what is necessary to save the PNE, or will he just turn a blind eye and let this 110-year-old institution die? The Honourable Minister. Well, I would like to thank the member opposite for her very important question. Our government is absolutely aware of the essential role municipalities play every day, and particularly of the essential role that they will play as we are all looking towards restarting the economy. As the member opposite suggested, public transit is an essential part of the work municipalities do. At the FMM meeting uh, over the phone last week with the Prime Minister and the First Ministers, the Prime Minister did discuss the need to support municipalities and the need for provinces to really be working with the municipalities and with us to ensure that our municipalities are able to be part of a successful relaunch of the Canadian economy. Ms. Kwan. Well, support for them is essential. I hope the government will act. The 